The Russian poet Alexander Pushkin wrote in his poem, The Egyptian Nights, Who will start the passionate tender? My love is now for sale. Tell, who of you could buy this night at a price of his own life? And there were the madmen, ready to offer a life for the sake of one night with that woman who possessed Helena's beauty, Sappho's passion, and Aspasia's intellect. She was the Egyptian queen, Cleopatra. Queen Cleopatra VII was the daughter of the Egyptian king Ptolemy XII. She was born in 66 BC in Alexandria, the largest cultural center of classical antiquity. After her father's death, 16-year-old Cleopatra, following the Egyptian tradition, married her 13-year-old brother Ptolemy XIII, and she began to rule Egypt. In three years, her husband and brother, being under the influence of his advisor, the eunuch Pothinus, had tried to dethrone the queen. Cleopatra had to escape to Syria, but she did not lose hope to regain the lost authority and wealth. Despite the famous legend, Cleopatra was not a beauty. Her look was spoiled by the big nose and narrow chin. Though, as the Roman historian Dion wrote, listening to her was a great pleasure. She could charm any man with her voice and manners, even passionless as well as elderly ones. Cleopatra spoke eight languages fluently. She was an admirer of literature and philosophy. She also played musical instruments and possessed all the ambitions and aspiration for power of her ancestors. In 47 BC, the Roman envoy Julius Caesar arrived in Egypt for a tribute. To win the Roman to her side, Cleopatra needed to enter the Alexandrian palace secretly. She rolled herself up into a carpet and then her loyal slave safely reached Caesar's apartments and put a precious burden at his feet. The 60-year-old commander was fascinated. Cleopatra, due to her cunning erudition and female charms, obtained the powerful friend who pacified her enemies and gave Egypt back to the queen. Cleopatra and Caesar traveled along the Nile for two months, enjoying each other's company, but serious affairs concerning the state forced the commander to return to Rome. Cleopatra had a son from Caesar, named Caesarion. The queen arrived in Rome with the one-year-old child. The elderly Caesar was in love with the Egyptian woman as if he were a young boy. He ignored his legal wife. In honor of Cleopatra, he placed a statue in the temple of Venus, the goddess of love. He was going to declare Caesarion his successor. All this resulted in a catastrophe. In 44 BC, Caesar fell as a victim of a plot. Heartbroken, whore of Egypt returned home to Egypt. After Caesar's death, his nephew Octavian Augustus and commanders Lepidus and Antony shared power in Rome. In 41 BC, Mark Antony arrived in Alexandria to pacify the enemies of the Roman Empire. To visit the messenger from the mighty state for interrogation, Cleopatra put on a luxurious suit of Aphrodite, the goddess of love. She intentionally behaved roughly and vulgarly, indulging Antony's martinettish taste. The commander was captivated. Their joy lasted for several months. And even after he had parted with Cleopatra and married the sister of Augustus, Antony could not forget the siren of the Nile. Four years later, he called Cleopatra to Antioch and married her. Cleopatra manipulated Antony masterfully and received everything that she wished. Her son, born from Caesar, was recognized as the heir at law. Her three children from Antony received the territories invaded by him. The queen's political competitor, her sister Arsinoe, was killed. The profile of Cleopatra was minted on coins and her name was stamped on shields of legionnaires the power of Egypt strengthened on the queen's nuptial bed. But in 31 BC, Octavian, the brother of Antony's legal wife, declared war with Cleopatra. However, Cleopatra didn't have the efficiency needed for a military commander. In the deciding battle at Cape Akitum in Greece, the Egyptian fleet headed by the queen receded. Antony abandoned the battlefield too, 
the Romans gained a total victory. To avoid shameful captivity, Cleopatra began to prepare for death. She started to build her own tomb and tested various poisons on her slaves, aspiring to find the most quick. For Cleopatra, it was not possible to rescue Egypt with her female dodges for the third time. Octavian was not fascinated with the 39-year-old queen's charms. In honor of his victory over Egypt, he was going to lead Cleopatra behind his triumphal chariot, chained as a slave. Though in a basket with figs, which was delivered to the palace upon Cleopatra's order, a small snake asp was hidden. Its bite rescued Cleopatra from shame, having granted the painless death similar to sleep. Octavian ordered to bury Cleopatra in Egypt and completed her tomb on his own costs. Egypt became the Roman province, and Caesarion, the son of Cleopatra, had been strangled upon Octavian's order. That strong woman tried to keep the Egyptian throne all her life, but lost it because she was a woman, but to the greater extent she could allow. <laughs>